With 3 million members searching, SingleMuslim.com proudly sponsors Single Muslim Live. Salam and welcome to the Single Muslim Live, sponsored by SingleMuslim.com with me now, Zikati. We're live here on Sky 752 and across Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and YouTube. Wherever you're watching, a very warm welcome, and you too can join in tonight's, today's discussion rather, and get advice by simply calling through to the studio on 01924 And remember, standard rates apply, so please make sure you get the bill payers permission before you call in, or why not share your thoughts with us on WhatsApp on 079-507-97017. Today's guest is Matthew Robinson, and the topic is a very interesting one, reverts, finding love, peace, and forgiveness. I'm so honored to have Matthew on our show today. And before we start, today is his birthday. So he's taken time out to do this talk oh. with us. So Matthew, assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam, how are you? I'm very well, thank you so much and happy birthday. Have you got anything thank special you. for you today? My wife, Farah's making me a carrot cake for my birthday, and that is the highlight of my day. Oh, bless you. No, honestly, I really appreciate um, you taking the time to talk to me today. I'm really actually excited to actually go through this um, interview with you and just get an idea of your journey, basically. But before we start, tell us a bit about yourself and what you do. <clears throat> okay, well, I, um, I run a... a a film, a film company called Migration Films. And what I do is I'm basically a humanitarian filmmaker. So that involves me uh, filming some events in the UK, but most of it is uh, events around the world, whether it's delivering of aid, places like Yemen, Iraq, Palestine, Bangladesh, um, to like, the Palestine Half Marathon, which I took part in, Ritual Challenge Pakistan. Um, yeah, that kind of thing. Um, yeah, that's pretty much what I do. <laughs> I'm an artist. I paint for fun, not for not you know, not for a career. I do. I don't know if I'd I could do that as a career. I, I, it's just a great creative release for me, painting. But yeah, your journey has been very very adventurous with the travel, with the filmmaking, and the charities that you work for, and it's very. It's an insight to see who you, I mean who you were before and where you are. And I know you on a personal level because we went, where did we go? Um, was it Morocco? It was Marrakesh. Was it Marrakesh? First. I was filming you guys doing the run. And that was what inspired me to sign up to run the Palestine Half Marathon, was the, the Marrakesh one. It's crazy how people meet and what we can do to inspire other people as well. I, I know a little bit about your story. Um, so can you just give us a little background of your journey into Islam, what was it like when you took the Shahada and what inspired you actually? Okay. To... You want the abridged version, yeah? <laughs> okay, basically, um, I uh, come from a very loving family, um, Christian upbringing, Church of England, used to go to Sunday school every Sunday. Um, and I, 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 I couldn't get my head around the fact that Jesus was God's only son. I thought, hang on, that doesn't make sense. We're all creations of God. Doesn't really, you know, doesn't add up. Um, and I, I felt that I, I wanted to be able to talk to God directly. And I don't know, it, it just, uh, when I was 13 years old, I went to Church of England secondary school. Um, it was actually founded by the Knights Templar, ironically, in 1300 and something um, in Bristol. And uh, a, a new vicar took over uh, in, 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 a, in the village I grew up in just outside of Bristol and he came to the house and I said, how's your school? Um, um, what, you know, and I said, well, it's very nice. Some of my friends' vicars come and take a Monday morning religious assembly. He said, oh, I'd like to do that. What do I need to do? And of course, I was only 13. And what I, in, what I meant to say was, you know, give a parable, inject some humor because it's teenagers, but I was 13. And I said, just be funny. And um, he turned around and was like, how dare you take my work in vain? How dare you take the Lord's name in vain? Who do you think you are? This is in front of my parents. My parents are like, what? I turned my back on organized religion. 
the age of 13. I was like, do you know what? I just, if you represent that God, I, I don't or, or religion. I don't want a part of it. But I still, you know, I I looked at Druidism. I looked at Hinduism. I looked at um, uh, Wiccan. I looked at all sorts of things. Yeah, but I knew there was an energy and a power and a God, a, a higher power and an energy. Um, and uh, well, to cut a long story short, um, but my mum, right, was always has always she's a great ju- judge of character, and she was always supportive of Yasser Arafat and the Palestinians, and said, you know, I don't agree with what's happening in Palestine. I think it's terrible, you know, how how the Palestinians are being treated. And she's a very good judge of character. So, I mean, okay, fast forward 10 years. um, I was 23 years old, doing my media course in Bath. And one of the questions was the representation of Islam in the British media. So that that question jumped off the page at me, because my parents, um, for their... For their fault to telegraph readers, unfortunately. Um, but basically, in the telegraph, it would say Israeli settlers, farmers, civilians, Palestinian fundamentalists, extremists, terrorists. And I can remember that disparity of language, yet my mum was like, well, these poor people are being persecuted. And so that's what jumps off the page at me. And at the age of 23, I went down to the mosque in Bath. I thought, I'm going to find out more about this. Yeah, shaved head, eyebrow pierced, Bristol Rover shirt on. I think they thought I was going to go and cause some damage there but um the guy invited me in and we sat down and we talked for two hours just on the basics of the quran you know one guy was like telling him about the american foreign policy another one was in uh, another brother was like we must talk about a zionist conspiracy theory and 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 and, and the imam was like no no we're just going to talk about the basics of islam just islam forget politics and i sat down and I listened and i left there a couple of hours later and i was like do you know what that's a logical loving forward thinking set of guidelines scientific set of guidelines to lead your life by if you need it um and i would pick islam over christian i'll pick islam if i had to pick a religion i don't need it i'm fine but if i had to that's what i'd pick and then four years later i met my now ex-wife in london um wanted to marry her and she said you need to convert to islam in pakistan i was like okay that was interesting. I'm up for that. Um, and so went to the Fessel Mosque, flew to Islamabad. Uh, that was a uh, that was 2001, June 2001. Um, I took the Shahada in the Fessel Mosque, Islamabad. That incredible building with the four minarets on the corners. Amazing bit of architecture. Um, guy called Professor Dr. Ali Zakhmad did the did the conversion or reversion, whichever however you want to name it. Um, and I asked him, what do I need to do to become a good Muslim? And he said, listen, he said, this could be quite controversial, so please excuse me, I hope not to offend anyone. But he said, um, don't listen to mullahs, don't listen to men with hats and beards who tell you this and tell you that. Read the Quran and talk to God. It's your deal with God. It's got nothing to do with anyone else. But read the Quran. And alhamdulillah, that, that was amazing. You know? And funnily enough, I met Mufti Menk last year um, in... Uh, in a charitable organization and I asked him the same question I said I asked this 20 years ago uh, what do you think it takes to be a good Muslim and he said um, be grateful to God for everything and be kind to all of God's creations that's it so, so yeah that's how I became a Muslim <laughs> I love that that is so inspirational in terms of what you heard around you in terms of the media and where you were also working in media, I guess, it was a huge conflict of interest in terms of what you were hearing and actually coming to an understanding for yourself. And your journey has been a long one. And my next question to you is, I guess, what was the hardest thing about, as we call it, reverting or you know, coming into the religion for yourself? What was the hardest thing? Um... I think at the time I was, I mean, I was 28, 28 when I became Muslim. Um, and I think one of the hardest things was to detach because I was, you know, listen, I worked in film and TV. Yeah. And my lifestyle up until that point was drinks after work, sometimes drinks at lunchtime. The Brit- British TV typical culture. So to turn my back to, to, to stop that was quite difficult. 
Um, and I did have difficulties with stopping some of that lifestyle over the years. You know, um, there were times when, you know, I felt really far away from Allah, you know, um, and there were times when I felt closer. Um, and the sad, I mean, I'll be honest, the sad thing is when I, when I, after I took Shahada, you know, I got married, had a child and, and, and then another child, and another child, and I was working in film and TV. And, and I'll be honest with you, I didn't live my life as I do today, you know, um, and that had an impact on my marriage had a, in fact, a devastating impact with an impact that I couldn't, we couldn't come back from sadly. Um, and it wasn't until 2014, I can remember, I was, I, I've been working on, what have I been working on? Release the Hounds, ITV2. Now, this TV show was just like, you know, so they go and shoot scary stuff. It's a horror game show, yeah? They shoot scary stuff, but it's not scary because it's just like they film it, you know? It's just, it's just footage of something happening. So I have to make it scary. And to make it scary, I'd have to do sound design and timing and make sure everything was scary. <laughs> um, but to do that I had to put myself in a dark place a scary place and, 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 and really think it's, 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 I had to put myself into a place I didn't want to be mentally you know uh, and, and emotionally um, and, and so I was talking to uh, we had to, we moved house um, it was in Kingston upon Thames and, and my, my middle son was like daddy take me to the mosque please so I took him to the mosque and uh, I met a brother there called Steve Braddor, who works for an organization called uh, Islam 21, 21C. Um, he works for them. He's a wonderful brother, Reva brother. He taught me how to pray. All those years, I didn't, you know, I, I, I love the concept of Islam. I love the idea of it. I love the belonging, of the feeling of belonging. I love the, you know, the, the, my now ex-wife's family. You know, it was, it was a beautiful thing to be part of, but I didn't make the effort to, to really search out how to learn more about my religion and how to understand it. And it was in 2014 that that, start, that journey truly started at Kingston Mosque. Um, and that was when, for me, the hard, one of the hardest things actually, you know, going back to your question, one of the hardest things of reverting. Matthew? Was, yeah? I want you to hold that right there because we're gonna go on break in literally 30 seconds. Okay. Just, I just asked Matthew, what was the hard thing about coming into Islam. And please, please make sure you come and join us in about 20 seconds after that advert here. And I would love to hear from you as well. So please, please, please make sure you send us your questions on 07 I look forward to speaking to you and Matthew very shortly. Members searching, singlemuslim.com proudly sponsors Single Muslim Live. With 3 million members searching, singlemuslim.com proudly sponsors Single Muslim Live. Thank you for coming back and joining us. And I want to go straight to Matthew. The topic is about reverts, finding love, peace, and forgiveness. Matthew, sorry, we, I interrupted you. What was the hardest thing about coming into the religion for yourself? Okay, as I said uh, before the break, one of the hardest things was leaving that lifestyle behind that I, was, that I grew up with and was used to and I'd only ever known that kind of lifestyle. And it was a new set of rules, principles that, 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 um, you know, that I, I had to come to learn and understand. Um, and I think that journey will never stop, you know, I've never stop learning more and more about about Islam. Um, um, and I think one of the hardest things personally was getting to a point where I'd been Muslim for 13 years before I truly started to practice my religion. And I still, you know, God, Allah, God, Allah has his plan. And... Um, you know, my time was 
the right time for me to do whatever I'm doing. <laughs> That's what I believe. You know, I believe Allah has His plan, and 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 you know, once I started to learn more about Islam in 2014, and then I'd had enough of working on these awful TV programs. Sorry, but they are awful. Um, I spoke to my friend Steve Brother at Kingston Mosque, and he said that a, a charity was looking for a videographer. So I became a videographer at Muntada 8, who are based in Parsons Green in West London. And that was where I really started my spiritual growth and my understanding and practicing of Islam truly blossomed at that point, basically. But yeah, I think that was the hardest thing. One of the hardest things was being Muslim for so long and not actually practicing my religion properly. Love it. You know, I love what I love about you, right? You're just so sincere and there is so much. We're just real with your information that I want to speak to you. And again, like leaving your lifestyle behind that you've been used to and growing up with um, is something we all struggle with. Even as a born Muslim, there are things that I have to discipline myself not to do on a daily basis where I know it's not going to be beneficial to myself, like bad habits. So for you to do that, I rate. I think I feel like I learned so much from rebirths. They make me feel like I'm not doing enough being a born Muslim. So people like you inspire me as well. So it's yeah. it's incredible. It's very inspiring. We have a question, so I'm gonna take this. Um, so really appreciate everybody who takes the time out to message us or text us. Um, so, Salam, thank you, Nazia and Matt Robinson. Matthew, he corrected himself because only your mom calls you Matthew, <laughs> right? Um, for today's show, my question is, have you tried single Muslim app? And his other question is, are you still a Muslim now? Yes, he's still a Muslim now. Okay. <laughs> uh, well, right. The first part of the question, no, I haven't tried single Muslim. Um uh, the second part is, yes, I am Muslim, and I will be Muslim till I die and beyond, inshallah. Um, I find that, uh, okay, my, my, my birth name is Matthew Robinson. Um, I was given a name, Mohammed Mateen, by my now deceased ex-father-in-law. Um, and, and I thought, I, for, for how much, until 20, 2017, when I was in Bangladesh, with Penny Appeal, actually, um, where I went to this mosque in Netrakona, in the north of the country, and I went to pray, pray um, uh, Maghrib, and the guy asked me my name, and I said, I'm oh, Muhammad Martini. He said, no, 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 no. You can't have the Prophet Sallallahu name and one of the 99 names of, his, of, of, uh, of Allah. You, it has to be Abdul Mateen. So then, <laughs> since 2017, it's Muhammad Abdul Mateen. Um, so yeah, I'm still Muslim, um, and I try my best to live the best Muslim life I can. If that makes sense. Well, I hope that answers your question, uh, Mr. Caller or Mrs. Caller. Um, so can you just repeat for this, Caller, where did you take the Shahada as a Muslim? Okay. I took the Shahada in the Faisal Mosque in Islamabad, Pakistan, on the 1st of July, 2001. Dr. Professor Ali Sahmad reverted me. <laughs> Love, it's crazy, isn't it? That is the most... The pinpoint how you remember the dates, the month, and it's just clear as rainbow as yesterday. What place yeah. to do it as well, isn't it, in Islamabad? Wow. <laughs> yeah, no, I know, I know. As uh, and he's head of Islamic studies as well. The guy who, who reverted me. So we have. Oh, we're getting a lot of questions today. Wow, you're very popular, Matt. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, um, the second question is, um, okay, I'm going to come back to these questions, so I hope you're still uh, watching us because I'm going to ask these questions. Um, have you had any backlash from your friends and family for reporting when you did? I've been really lucky, not really. My family have been wonderful, understanding, you know. Um, uh, you know, I got, um, I, I was, I got divorced in 2018, and I was blessed last year to get married again, to get remarried, alhamdulillah. Um, and um, yeah, my family are just so accepting, um, understanding. Friends-wise, um, nobody's really, I mean, I've, I've, I've been questioned about certain things where people say, oh, well, you know, don't you think that Islam is a misogynistic religion? I'm like, no, <laughs> it's quite the opposite. Um, 
you know, it's, just, it's the usual thing about, I, I haven't had any backlash really. I, actually, apart from Facebook last year, one guy started saying, oh, you're, you know, someone I've known for like 25 years started saying, I think um, he must have had some personal issues himself, but he was basically saying, oh, your religion's full of hate, you kill people. And I was like, okay, block, <laughs> goodbye. But that's about it really. I've been really lucky. Um, yeah, I've been, I've, been, I've, been, I've been blessed really on that front. Nice. Thank you for sharing that. Please keep um, giving your calling in or sending your messages in. We'd love to hear from you. My uh, next part of the uh, this uh, show is is talking a bit about your, I guess, love life. I mean, this is what the show is: a single Muslim. <laughs> um, what was life like when it came to finding um, someone to marry in the Muslim community after you took the shahada? Okay, well, obviously, I took the shahada because I wanted to get married. That was initially what happened in 2001. Um, then, obviously, that all fell apart eventually, um, and I was divorced in 2018, and I truly believed that I would be on my own for the rest of my life. You know, I'm turned 48 today, and I thought, you know, I was 40, 47. Yeah, it was about just over a year ago. I was like... Um, I don't, you know, I'd, I'd, I'd been on my own for 18 months or longer, and I, and, and I was happy with that. I was like, do you know what? What, what, whatever Allah's plan is for me, great. I ain't looking. I don't want to look, you know, after everything I've been through. And also, you know, it takes two to tell the the, 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 when a relationship breaks down, it takes two people. So the upset I'd call someone else as well. I didn't want to inflict that on anyone else, you know. I, I thought, you know, I just try and do Allah's, Allah's bidding. And then mm -hmm. I met uh, a friend, um, and it was like an instant, like, wow. <laughs> and um, this 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 person was someone that I'd known professionally for some time, an artist. Um, nothing but respect, always absolutely bounded, respectful communication. Never never thought. And then we met, and I, and I. Um, I happened to move house actually, and it was that point I was like, "Wow!" And it was it was okay. Um, how do I put this? Preordained, um, part of Qadrullah, part of Allah's plan. But um, I I just realised that this person was someone that I knew I could grow with and would help help me with my deen, you know, with my my akira, with the, with the afterlife, and and. And someone I could I could have, lead a good life on, in this dunya with, and, and alhamdulillah, we've been married. Got married on the 30th of August last year, and Yay. yeah, and and our and our, and our uh, our kind of like honeymoon, delayed honeymoon, is um, going to be doing the K2 base camp trek. That sounds a bit twisted, I know, because it's quite hard, but that's our honey, that's our kind of belated honeymoon. <laughs> I love that. So one of the questions I just had was, was it hard to date a Muslim woman as a weaver? And um, if you just tuned in, and what Matthew just said was he converted to Islam to get married to this lady. And one door opens, another door closes in every aspect. And Matthew mm -hmm. just explained, you know, some of the things that he's gone through, taking the shahada and even in marriage, you know, we win some, we lose some, and that's the game of life, I guess, right? Yeah, you, absolutely. Yeah, and you know, you give people hope as well, and it's. I'm glad that I'm speaking to somebody um, from a different background, and you being a man. So it's helpful <laughs> to speak to the brothers out there as well, because you know we we spoke a lot about divorce on my previous. Um, shows as well and it's something that we all the not we I mean the community is struggling with finding love after divorce and then I guess as well being a reaver has it been hard for you finding love again Matthew this is the real question how how long did it take <laughs> how, how long did it take um for, as, as I said it was um let me work this out April uh, it was 18 months it's been long yeah around about 18 months um, and I wasn't looking. It wasn't at all. And um, uh, I think my, my 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 from my own ex my own previous experiences, um, I was quite pessimistic. I felt quite down about stuff. I, I, I 
Matthew? carried a lot of guilt as well. I'm going to have I to think. interrupt you again. I'm sorry. As soon as we come to the juicy part, we have to go on break. We are going <laughs> to come back to that. Um, if you guys are listening, please make sure you message us on 079-507-9701. Maybe share us your story. Are you a reaver? Have you found love? What's your story? We would love to hear from you. So please make sure you check back in and we'll see you very, very soon. Three million members searching, SingleMuslim.com proudly sponsors Single Muslim Live. With three million members searching, SingleMuslim.com proudly sponsors Single Muslim Live. Thank you so much for coming back. And we have got so many questions, but before I take any of them, I want to come back to Matthew. Matthew, the question before we went on break was, was it hard finding love again after your first marriage? Well, but actually it wasn't, no, it wasn't at all because um, I had this, I had made my mind up that I didn't want to look. And I was like, I'm, you know, in fact, I said to myself, if Allah places someone in front of me, and that's the right person, then alhamdulillah, and that's exactly what happened. So, um, you know, if anybody is divorced or going through divorce or, or struggling with these kind of things, it's, it's like, there is hope. There is hope, you know, especially if you stick to your deen and you, you know, you, you pray, you pray a staccato and, and, and keep it, keep it halal, trust me, keep it halal and, 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 and things will, things will, things will happen, God's plan will happen. Because the worst thing you can do is rush into something force yourself into something, go on your nafs and think, oh, this is, be driven by your mind and your own will rather than God's will, because at the end of the day, God's will is the best. And that's what I did. I, I, I stepped back and God presented Farah, you know, alhamdulillah. I've never been happier. And I, thank you. And I think when I see you or when I hear you, this is the key thing. You, you give other people hope. And it's when we see other people have gone through a similar journey to ourselves or when we're going through hardship, we don't want to feel isolated or alone in it. So thank you so much for sharing that. And hello, my um, wifey out there as well. I'm sure she's watching us, you in particular, Matthew. <laughs> so there's some questions there. Again, thank you so much. I appreciate every single one of you who take the time out to message or live. Matthew, you're such an inspiration. My question to you is, do you have children? And if so, will you raise them Muslim? Okay. Yeah, tricky one, this. Um, I have four children. Um, I have a daughter who's 19 who um, uh, lives uh, independently in London. Um, I have three boys who live in Morocco with their mum, so they have an Islamic upbringing. Um, and I have three stepchildren who... The, all, all the children um, across the board <laughs> collectively have an Islamic upbringing, yes. Yeah. Um, um, next question. It's good, alhamdulillah, that Matthew has all these stories and memories that he remembers. Alhamdulillah. Yes, definitely. Um, another question. Okay. What quality would you suggest for the Muslim brothers that they should look out for when looking for a partner? What are the qualities that they should look out for? I like this okay. question, actually. It's really okay. from a man's perspective. So go for what it, should Matt. They, What should they look out for? Um... Honesty. Honesty, number Honest. one. Yeah. Honesty, yeah. Um, humility. So not not try not to find someone with a massive ego if you can help it. Um, honesty, humility, um, kindness, um, humour. You've got to have a, you know a bit of humour, and somebody's on their dean. I don't know. That's that's. Yeah, that's what I'd say. <laughs> I love that. So I hope that answered your question um, to the person who texted us. And I think it is very, very important before, like you said, people are rushing in so quickly in marriage 
And as quickly as they rush in, it's rushing out of that marriage. And it leaves people very confused and conflicted, especially in modern day society where we're, all we're doing is looking for instant gratification. And I think sometimes as well, because we're following what everybody else is doing, we want to be there at the front line. And that can be quite a bad hindrance to people who are not emotionally ready to get married. So um, what Matthew said was look for humility, um, honesty, and a bit of humor, somebody who's kind and generous. It's not that hard, you know. <laughs> there are people out there who have all these qualities. But actually, in the same breath, we must become that as well. Isn't it not important for us to honor those values before we start looking for that in other people as well? Mm, very important. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. I want to quickly move on. Um, let's speak a little bit about mental health. We don't really raise this topic about reverts who may struggle with mental health, you know, it's not easy going from an extreme lifestyle like you did, going out, doing all the things that you did um, in a lifestyle that wasn't, most, um, you know, in the Islamic framework. What did you struggle with maybe at the time? And how do you deal with your mental health? Um, I think at the time, um, the, one of the biggest issues I had was I was so caught up in my life and in the dunya that I, it, it's... It, it was quite. I was quite short-sighted with a lot of things. So um, I think it was. It's hard to say, really. Um, if I think due to the lack of understanding, full under, not full understanding, but the lack of understanding of, of 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 Islam, and yet I was saying I'm Muslim, and yet I was still at times involved with certain western social behaviors you know and that was you know that that was difficult to 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 come to terms with to to to, to fix in my head to to understand um i think that one of the uh, one of the things um for me has also been i mean i, I listen i've never been felt more welcome anywhere in the world Everywhere I go, you know, I feel made so welcome by the Muslim community, by the Ummah. But at the same time, there have been quite a few occasions of where cult, certain cult individuals in certain cultures behave a certain way towards me or treat me a certain way. And that's been difficult. That's been hard to come to terms with. Um, I think for me, one of the best ways to to deal with any kind of uh, anxiety, stress, uh, depression, because you know these are all. I think, I think anyone who says they don't suffer from any of these things is not telling the truth. I think we all, to a varying degree, suffer with some form of, you know, at some time in our lives, some form of mental stress or mental illness of varying degrees. Um, for me, what I do, I mean, for me, the greatest release of all is prayer. In the sense of, you know, I will pray, and when I pray, Fajr, I will turn my will, and you know, I've got my own will, what I want, ideas in my head, yeah, of how I want things to go, how I want my life to be, but the biggest release for me is to pray to Allah in the morning and turn my will and my life over to Him, yeah. and truly trust that His plan is the one for me. Um, you know, that saying, "Tie your camel before you pray." You got to take action. You got to live your life. You got to do the things you need to do, but be open, and and that actually is the biggest pressure release valve for a lot of the the stress and anxiety that I would go through is, is to do that, to surrender to Allah. You know, and that Islam submission in it at the end of the day. So, yeah, I love that. It's just your wisdom and what you've learned. You've got so much more to offer to the world and everything. Um, talk to me a little bit about some of the charity work, some of the auctions that you're doing. Because you're part of healing yourself as well. You know, it's important that we speak about and the advice we can give to people that are watching us um, in terms of when it comes to coping with mental health. There are a lot of things that you're doing at the moment, Matthew. So your auction, your charity work. Yeah. Um, well, I mean, I mean, the, the, the greatest, the greatest impact on my life 
that of anything has been this charity work that I've done, you know, um, for years and years and years and years, I try, you know, I reached the top of my tree on light entertainment, television and film, you know, but that left me, you know, left my bank balance full, but left my heart empty and um, without purpose. And what I do now, this charity work. So I started off just being a videographer and, and filmmaking. And now I get involved with, well, depending on what the job is. If it's just deli- if it's filming aid delivery, then I film aid delivery. But if it's a challenge, you know, I did the Palestine half marathon. I trained for that, uh, ran that um, with Unazia and with Rokea and Salma and Shakira. Hey. And um, and then obviously then I did the Pakistan ritual challenge with Muslim charity and that was another challenge. So I took part in that. So it kind of took it to another level for me. It was getting involved and fundraising as well. So so not just getting rewards of the financial rewards of like the, uh, trading services, time, money and money for time and services. It was took it to another level for me spiritually. Um, and and then the latest trip, well, which is coming up in August, providing the Pakistan gets taken off the red list, is K2 Base Camp Trek with Muslim Charity. And I'll be doing this with Farah, with my wife, Farah, um, Farah Visual Arts on Instagram, Farah Subhan, artist, uh, Islamic pop artist. Uh, we will be flying to Skardu, Islamabad, then Skardu, and then taking on a 12, 13 day trek to the K2, to K2 base camp up to a height of 5,000 meters. Um, coming back, going over a thing called Gondagora La, which is like 6,000 meter high pass. And then we'll be going to the Husha Valley School, Husha Village School, where Farah will be do, doing an art therapy workshop for the children there. So we're raising funds for that. Our target's at £5,000. Um, and we're doing a Ramadan art auction, which actually there's two days left to run. Yes. Day and a half. Um, so we're, 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 we're auctioning the work of Daria Rasset, of Hand of Aisha, of uh, Usma Rani, of... Um, please forgive me if I forget anyone's name. Actually, I'm going to have to get my phone out of the room. Do you mind if I just reel the names off quickly? Yeah, um, where can they go on um, bid for the auctions as well? Yeah, okay, the place to go, it's um, if you go to muslimcharity.org.uk forward slash auction. That simple. So we've got work from Aisha Ahmed, Hand of Aisha, Ifa Ali, uh, Usma Rani, Daria Rasset, uh, Nagahan Seymour, Farah Mosaheb, uh, Rashida Osman, and um, Sa- um, Sawat Abbas. And myself. Yeah, and Farah. <laughs> so we need to, the auction is closing at 7 p.m. tomorrow. Um, we would like there to be more bids because obviously all funds raised, 100%, goes to um, Children of the World campaign, which what that does is that for this particular fundraising, a portion of it is going to go to provide water heaters in the Hoosh village. Now, this is a place in winter, it goes down to minus 25 degrees centigrade. People can't wash, the water's frozen. So they're providing water heaters to give, especially women and young girls, the, the opportunity to for personal hygiene, for wudu, for prayer, just just to make life bearable, and also for the for the Husha Valley School and for street children in Pakistan, Bangladesh, and Kenya. So yeah, that's what it's in aid of. I've already bid it, so you guys are listening. <laughs> There's a month of giving. Make sure um, you go and bid. Everything's going to a good cause. We will be going on a break shortly and coming to our last segment of the show. So this is your last chance to send us any questions or share your stories with myself and Matt. So we shall see you very, very shortly. And please stay tuned and bye. See you soon. <laughs> With 3 million members searching, SingleMuslim.com proudly sponsors Single Muslim Live. With 3 million members searching, SingleMuslim.com proudly sponsors Single Muslim Live.
Welcome back. And today's topic is about reverts, finding peace, love and forgiveness. We're in the last section of our um, show here and it's gone so quick. So please make sure you message us on 079-5079-7017. Matthew, we have one question here. Um, it's an interesting question, actually, from the viewer. What qualities should we avoid when it comes to seeking a partner to avoid? Narcissism. <laughs> Narcissism. Avoid, like the plague. <laughs> but it's quite hard to tell. Um, mm -hmm. uh, people are very judgmental people. Um, um, I mean, listen, we all know money's important, but somebody who's obsessed by money, avoid that. Yeah. I, don't know. I don't know what to say. I can only talk from my personal experience. I don't know if this is the right answer. I can only tell you what I feel. So... Um, just go in with an open heart, yeah? Open heart, open mind, be honest. And um, if you keep an open mind, open heart and open eyes, then inshallah, if there's something not, if there's a red flag to be seen, Allah will get it waved strongly in your face, so. <laughs> you know, we speak a lot about toxic relationships from a female's perspective, and it's mostly projected onto men, not projected, but we see it being spoken about a lot. So it's important we get a male perspective on what to avoid in females. There are toxic females out and about as well. And narcissism is a very important word that we understand what it is. And when something doesn't feel right for us, always make sure um, you question it. Not question it can actually get a lot of us into trouble when it comes to marriage and getting to know somebody. So mm -hmm. thank you for asking that question um, to the viewer. We have... Ooh, a very, very lovely message here. A question, actually. Do you have any tips for Muslim women who are dating reverts? <laughs> Take your time. <laughs> any tips for Muslim women who are dating reverts? Well, you shouldn't be dating unless it's halal. <laughs> so, um, um, just try to help educate the brother. I don't know. I don't know what to say, really. It's, it's, that's a tough one. Um, yeah, I'm sorry. I don't know what to say to that one. Well, listen, you don't need to have the answer <laughs> because if it's not something you know... I would say, I would say it, should be, it should be the same to however you date anybody, really. There, there's my answer. Treat them the same as if anyone yeah, I, from your... From, I think the uh, one I think my input on this is if you're a Muslim woman dating a reaver is be very patient with them because they're still learning about the religion. And I'm always speaking from experience of my sister being married to a reaver as well. And it's for feet for our sisters is to help that person go through the journey with them so they don't feel alone and isolated. So I hope that answers your question <laughs> some way. Um, Matthew, I wanted to move on to asking you something about your own journey. What's the best thing that you've learned about yourself in your highs and your lows throughout the last 20 years or since you've been on your Islamic journey? <sighs> wow. About myself or about Islam? Or one of the best things I've learned about me? You, about in this journey? Um, oh, that's so tough. That's such a tough question. Um, I, I've learned that I, I have an open heart. Um, uh, I, you know, I, I'm not as bad as I used to think I was, not as bad a person as I used to think I was, you know? Um, that's such a tough question, Nazia. I know, I know. But I love that. We just said that it's just so pure and so sincere. We humans, we always think we're worse than we actually are. And mm. you to actually acknowledge that, that is your answer. Your first answer is always going to be the best answer to your growth. And, yeah, I love that. Thank you, Matt. We have more questions. Um, oh, Wow. One second, I'm getting there. Last question for Nazia Katoon to discuss today for me. I love this. 
Um, what is a good way to ask a lady for her number? Should I give her a compliment first and ask respectfully? Okay. <laughs> I have to answer this very quickly. Um, what is a good way to ask a lady for her number? Just be direct and maybe ask her. But also take the hint if she doesn't want to communicate with you maybe as well. Um, complimenting your woman is always a very, very good start, a very charming effect as well. We females love compliments and ask her respectfully. Yes, always ask a woman out respectfully on a coffee halal date. That is it. Meeting. We call it a meeting, not date. Keep it halal. <laughs> okay. Um, thank you so much for the question. Um, what advice would you give to fellow reverts in general, um, Matthew, and then when it comes to finding love? Okay, um, I would say get involved with your local. It's, it's hard. This is hard. These are hard times in coronavirus, you know, because the, the it's hard. you can't just walk into a mosque. You have to book yourself in. Do you know what I mean? So to to walk into a mosque to to be immersed in your local mosque community, it, it's so much harder at the moment. Inshallah, that will change soon. But um, what I would say is when things do go back to normal, um, just spend time in your local mosque, speak to brothers, uh, find out if there are any courses, any evening courses, any classes, uh, Arabic classes. Um, uh, also, there's some great organizations as well. One is, is one such as AIRA, um, which uh, is, is very good for new Muslims. Um, yeah, I, I would say uh, ask Ask people that you know if there are any support groups for for, for new Muslims. Um, and generally, generally speaking, for Reavers, generally, um, yeah, just be, be there for each other, support each other. You know, don't be afraid to reach out. You know, yeah. you raise something really, really important. I forget the times we're living in. People don't have access to this community to go in and walk in freely to a mosque like we did post um, before the whole pandemic. So I think people need to really dig deeper now. And we need to reach out more to the Reva brothers and sisters and make sure that they're in a safe space. But thank you for sharing that. That's really important to remember to feel part of the community. And I mean, just to wrap it up and everything, what advice would you give to reverts when it comes to finding love? Because I guess that's going to be a very hard journey when you're trying to find yourself in the religion and then also love at the same time. What advice would you give to people going through this journey themselves? Okay, um, what, what advice would I give? Um, I would say... It depends on your intention, you know. Some people just want to get married to complete their deen. Um, some people are a little more cautious. Um, if you feel that that's what you want to do and you want to have an introduction, then do it a hell of a way. Ask any people at the mosque or people in your community if they, they know of anyone who's looking to get married. Um, but just be careful, you know, just, just take your time. And if you are in particularly, if you've met someone you like, then do it properly, you know. Go and speak to the meher or the dad or, or, or brother and just do it properly there's no need to rush anything trust me there's no need just take your time and yeah that's it <laughs> no i love that see it's it's nice to hear it from somebody who's you have a lot of years um i do <laughs> <laughs> matthew's 48 today i <laughs> am i have a I feel like 148 right now. You don't look 48 at all. Oh, bless you, bless you, bless you. There's um, one last thing I did want to say, again, is the auction, charity yeah. auction. It's my, it's my, sorry, I'm going to plug that shamelessly. There's 7 p.m. tomorrow, <laughs> muslimcharity.org.uk forward slash auction. Go and bid. There's some banging works of art on there. So you'll be giving Sadaka Jaria to these children around the world, yeah? And you'd be walking away with an amazing piece, amazing work of art at a fraction of the cost it would to, to get it in a gallery. No brainer. Do it. And also, when my book comes out next year, look out for that. Uh, Travels of a Humanitarian Filmmaker. When is that coming out next year? Um, I, well, yeah, hopefully. <laughs> it's written. 
I just went into it's um it's going to be out on Audible. It depends how long it takes to go through all the paperwork and the process, but it'll be out on Audible by the end of the year and inshallah inshallah print sometime next year. But yeah, it's oh. about my travels with the with the different different charities. So I'll be the first person to buy that book, so it'll be interesting. It'll be very interesting. Before we go, um, in your all right, let's say maybe three words. Three words. What's been the highlight of your journey so far? The three highlight. <laughs> Not three, three words. Three words. Oh god. Do you know what? When I'm filmmaking or I'm doing corporate videos or whatever, I I, I ask people to do this the very same thing, and I think it's so easy. I'm like, yeah, just say three words. It sums us up. And now you're turning it on me. Blimey. Okay. Um, three words that sums up my journey. Hope. Faith. Love. Faith and? Love. Love. Mm-hmm. Hope, faith, love. These There's are nothing's the worth anything without love. <laughs> three things we're going to take away from speaking. Matthew today honestly Matthew time has flown by if you have missed the show I'm sure you can find it on repeat on YouTube please make sure you take the time to actually watch this it's been a joy talking to Matthew today so just to summarize we have been talking about Rupert's finding love peace and forgiveness we had Matthew talking to us about his journey right from the time when he took his shahada the obstacles that he faced Overcoming the challenges, as a leader, finding love, going through divorce, overcoming mental obstacles, I guess, and then finding love again. We spoke a lot about um, what advice we can give to reverts and how to actually find love for reverts as well. So everything has been so wonderfully um, given to us today by Matthew. Matthew, um, what are you doing for your birthday today? Very quickly before we come off air. Sorry, what was that? Birthday. Well, I'm about to go to Asda to buy some ingredients because Farah's going to bake me a Yay! carrot cake. Good, carrot good cakes. Stuff. Carrot yeah. cakes are my favourite. So much to my guests. Thank you for joining us and for me, Nazi Katoon, along with the whole team at British Muslim TV. Thank you for watching us and assalamu alaikum. Three million members searching, SingleMuslim.com proudly sponsors Single Muslim Live.